Good evening, everybody. So let us start our uh, lecture tonight, and let us see our schedule. Okay. So according to our schedule, we are in the third quarter of our course content. Okay, so far we have finished, we have reviewed 1321, we have completed main contents, object-oriented principles, class, object, inheritance, polymorphism, abstract class. Those are the principles uh, of object-oriented programming. We discovered, we, I'm sorry, we discussed those. And we started discussing data structures topics, linked list, tag, and queue we, we covered, okay? So there, are, uh, there is another one more data structure topic we will cover, that binary SASD, BSD, we will discuss this later. But before that, we want to discuss some programming topic, exception handling. After that, we will discuss file operation. Actually, our goal is to discuss file operation. So in order to do file input output operation, we need exception handling. Okay. So before Thanksgiving break, we will finish. Hopefully, we will uh, wrap up everything. By the way, we published our test. Uh, Test two grades. You see that? Okay, the review. Uh, what is the review request is uh, available until maybe day after tomorrow, 31st October 31st. I made one day extra. Usually it is three days, but I made one day extra. So if you have any uh, concern about your grade. As a human being, we may do mistake because we grade a lot. So if you think that there is our mistake, then just submit a great request. We will take care of. Okay. But a few people, okay, that we don't know yet that whether you uh, that one of the questions are polymorphic expression, expression, polymorphic expression, object relationship. The question was easiest, and that was the easiest question. And I discuss explicitly in this class with example. I code it. And I told a very hard or bad word that if you do not understand this or do not do this, cannot do this, do not tell me that you took this course with me. Right? I'm telling you that again. But still, many of you did mistake. It's as unexpected to me. And whoever did completely reverse order, Okay, whoever thought completely reverse order that got total zero, that you have to send me I send as an email stating with a promise that you will show me by the end of this semester, you will do, I want to show you your actual practice, how much effort you are giving in this course, how do I see that? I want to see your either your replete account or your GitHub account or being your computer, I want to see how many programs you do practice. If I see that you really do practice a lot, then I will believe that you okay, you know this, but you unintentionally did a mistake, then I will give you some paper. So you have to send me an email, send me an email and state, give me a statement or promise that what you will do for yourself, not for me. Okay? So whatever programming practice you will do, you have to send me an email, okay? We will consider that. Huh? Yeah, you see that if you did like completely zero, you got completely zero for the polymorphic expression question. That if you claim that you thought we were asked to write one correct answer, maybe the reason is that you saw our previous year questions, test questions, that we, we had same test questions, similar test questions in our previous year. We asked for write the, to write the correct answer, maybe you saw your, our previous question, year question, so you wrote, did, you wrote the 
he pointed the right answer. That is my understanding. But if you want to give some point back, then you have to show us something that you are really doing practice. And those people, if I see you again one more time that you are opening your device and playing games or watching video, then I will not give you the point. I will revoke it. We are at the last quarter of this course. I like, I don't like to see you again in this course next semester. Okay, I like everybody to get at least B in this course. Okay, we will discuss exception handling today. Exception handling is an exceptional topic in programming and maybe you will uh, Maybe you will get some interest or you will learn something new from this topic. So let us open our slides. So an exception, an exception is an unexpected error in our program. Okay? An exception like is an accident. That is, an accident is not an intentional thing, right? Okay? An occurrence is... If it is an in intentional, that is, then we don't tell that that is an accident. Okay, that is a crime. Okay, so an exception is an unintentional one or unusual error in our program that happens and may happen or usually happen. No programmers, no programmer claim that I do not do any mistake in my program. Everybody does mistake, so this is why there are, we have reviewers in all companies. There are programmers, there are seniors, reviewers, and there are also, we say, quality assurance engineers. So they check that whether the program or application is working accordingly. Okay. Like an exception a, a indicates that there is an error or there are some mistakes in our program. Okay, so uh, there are good ways, there are technical ways to handle exceptions. So in order to develop a robust and clear and powerful and fault tolerant program, we need to always to consider that there might be some exceptions in our program and we need to be ready. So in, we need to just last to take action previously. If this action happens, then we will do something else. Okay. So sometimes, excuse me. Sometimes when you go for an interview, there is a good question that people, you will be asked some exception handling questions. Okay, one of the except unusual exception handling question is that, okay, people may ask you, yeah, please take your time. When you are done, then tell, let me know. Are done? Uh, is your side talk done? Okay, one of the unusual questions that is a like interview question is that sometimes there will be use, there will be managers, programmers, and VP or some skilled programmers, and they will ask you, okay, give me an example of exception, an exception handling in real life. Okay, that. We don't know anything about exception, uh, anything about programming. Okay. So in our real life, we see that, for instance, like many years back, or 50 or 100 years back, so that we had, uh, we did not have many freeway. Maybe we had a highway like this, high speed way, highway, that people drove in this way, like. Maybe maybe long time ago there were only one lane. After that, developers they developed two lanes, right? 
one for coming and another for going. Then what happens, let, let us think about situation. What happens if there is an accident on the right lane? If there is a single right lane, one lane on the right side, or left side, if there is an accident, what happens? So then, as usually, if there is an accident over here, or this, this, if this big truck is struck over here, then what will happen? The all, all other vehicle will share this another lane, right? So then there will be traffic. There will be slow speed, right? So in order to resolve this issue, so this is an accident. If an accident happens, so in order to resolve slow traffic, people ride like in this way, our government construct a free, very wide highways, right? There are multiple lanes. If one lane gets stuck, then people use another lane, another, other, another lane. Okay, nowadays all, there are many freeways that are also two-sided. Okay, so that this is less accident free, right? It is one for going and another for coming. And moreover, in now in modern freeway, there is one other also another extra lane that we say emergency lane. In case all of this, this, these lanes are blocked, okay, so that they keep this lane free always so that emergency vehicles like ambulance or police officer, police car or the fire truck can go and use this lane, right? This could be an example for exception handling in our real life. Okay. I will come back to this later. How we can simulate this to a real life situation. Okay. In our program, for instance, where do we face exceptions? Unexpected uh, errors. For instance, if there is one regular or well-known exception is that if something gets divided by zero, right? So we know that is undefined, we get an undefined or undetermined value if something is get, is, is get divided by zero. For instance, in this situation, in this program, I have x equal to 5, y equal to 10, z equal to 15. If I divide z by y minus 2x, So there will be division by zero, and then program will raise an issue. So in this situation, for instance, if it is a middle of a code, of a large program, if, the, if this line is raised at the middle of a large program, then what will happen? The total, the entire program will, will terminate. In that situation, maybe the entire application will terminate or close. Sometimes when we, we use, you see that many app, when you use uh, many app, have you ever noticed that sometimes while using our app, suddenly it goes closed? You notice that, right? It suddenly stops or, or the screen or app, total app closes. Or sometimes we need to restart our, our device. It happens, right? So that happens due to unresolved exceptions. This is why every newer version, they always try to fix that kind of unexpected exceptional error or, or problems, right? So in this kind of, like short kind of problem, since this is the last or almost the last statement, it will not be a great problem for me. This, only this program will terminate. But think about the situation, if this is my is the middle of a program, or this program is linked with another program. This function is linked with another function. Then this will create an, an issue. Okay. In this case, from this kind of concept or situation, exception that the, the exception handling mechanism comes in. Okay. There are actually two types of exception. We can say or er, er, two kinds of exception, or we can say error, maybe or mistakes. So whatever we do, we do a mistake in our program, we say errors, right? Actually, there are two kinds of errors in our program. 
we say call runtime error or we say compile time error. We say runtime error or compile time error, okay? So compile time errors is that if we do any mistake, for instance, instead of S is in uppercase, we see if we say type in S is in lowercase. Our compiler shows error message right away. Okay, so our, as soon as we type in our program, our for Eclipse, our, our modern IDEs, they compile the program right away, very shortly, so that even we do not realize sometimes that one prime is complete, our program is being compiled. So as soon as we do any mistake, it shows an error, right? So this error is showing. That means this is called a compile time error. Okay? And for this error, if even if we do not have any compile time error, for this, for instance, for this case, in this case, okay, for this program. So then what happens? We are discussing that there is an error over here. There is a mistake over here, grammatically or mathematical mistake over here, right? Okay? So it will create an exception. Then after this exception, the following lines will not be executed. Okay, and your program, our program will terminate at this point without giving us any notice or any warning or error message. Okay, so let us try to run this program. I, I believe everybody understand that. So if I run this program, you will see that since this line has error 10, and suddenly it will terminate my program, and so we will not be able to see the output of this line. Whatever I do have, there is no output for this line. You see that? As soon as I get error for this line, so it will not get error. So this kind of error, it, there is no error on run time, compile time, but this error, it, it, it becomes active during our program execution. That is called execution time error or run time error or runtime exception, okay? So actually we call, we said error. If we say it's an error, so then this error will occur or will be activated at during runtime, not my program compile time, okay? So there are several kinds of errors that trigger during program execution or runtime. So one of the well known is, we are familiar with arithmetic expression. If usually if it goes by, goes by division by zero, or maybe multiplication by uh, an infinite number, okay? And there is another thing that null pointer exception. Null pointer exception happens, for instance, if you want to find a length, find the length of a string, but the string does not exist. For instance, if you want to find the length of a substring, but the substring does not exist. There is no string in the, no substring in the string. Or if you want to do an operation with an object, that object does not exist. That will create null pointer exception. That means the object or instance will refer to a memory point that does that, that is empty or that does not have anything to work with. Okay, that is called null pointer error. Okay, another uh, error is called input mismatch error. Sometimes if we do, for instance, if I want, I need to, I need to input something I need to input something, but if I do unintentionally input something else, for instance, if I want to input something, input want to input a character, okay, but I un unintentionally I may enter a number or I may enter a string, right? So this is why there is a most possibility that when we use our keyboard to take our input there is a possibility that we may do a mistake. This is why most of the input methods, they enforce to use exception handling mechanism. 
So what is the exception handling mechanism? Mechanism we will go shortly there. So one of the way is to is try catch statement. Try statement is the statement where we put or enclose the statement that might generate an exception. We enclose those statement within the try block, and within the catch block, we put something else if the exception happens we put something to resolve that exception for instance in our real life how do we handle an accident if, we, if an accident happens then we take a different detour different road right different route to avoid the accident or situation right traffic so same thing we will enclose our code that might generate an exception within try block and within case block we need to put whatever we want to do if that exception happens okay there are other kinds of exception for instance number format exception for instance instead of putting uh, integer and that that happens between integer and fluid or double type numbers and another common exception is that is array out of a bound exception while doing any kind of array operation if we go out of the range of index out of index of an array okay so that happens frequently that is called array out of bound exceptions so these are the common exceptions that happens frequently in our programs and that we need to know how to handle this kind of exception if or when this happen okay and the mechanism is called exception handling the exception handling mechanism is that for instance we will perform a task and if the preceding task okay that is this task did not execute correctly or there that means if that creates an error or exception we will perform error processing we will process the error and then after that we will go to the next task because the reason that I saw a minute ago sir for instance if once this happened then we are not able to execute the following lines right so we now we need a mechanism so that if even it happens so if it happens then we will bypass this statement and we will continue with the following statements that is our goal so this is a pseudocode format for exception handling for, for our upcoming test we don't allow you to write pseudocode you have to write actual code and it is easy not not that much people can do like you it's, it's not a rocket science okay so if you do practice then you will learn in most of the modern programming languages they have exception handling mechanism either for some built-in classes or some built-in uh, packages and some built-in methods to handle this exception for instance this is exception handling a class hierarchy in java it is not maybe visible let me go to the next next slide so in java we know that in java compiler we have the uh, lang package java.lang package and we have our object class i told that right during inheritance the object class is the highest level class okay and on that class okay there are subclasses is called throwables and that has another subclass error class and that has another subclass exception class and another subclass runtime exception other types of exceptions this is a class hierarchy for exception handling so according to the nature or criteria of the exceptions some of the exception handling mechanism are written in this maybe in this class 
some of them may be in this class, some of them may be in this class. In order to handle this exception. And not only this, and sometimes these are not sufficient for us. Okay, because due to our program velocity, uh, program size and, and purpose, there might be different kind of errors or exception that will that may arise that even the developers did not have any idea. Okay, so in that situation, we have to know how to develop our own exceptions. Built-in exception, how to develop custom exception. We may need to know we learn how to develop custom exception and how to handle those exceptions. Okay, maybe maybe this class this uh, is is a little bit visible in Java. Still, again, Java this object class is is the highest class. Then it has throwable subclass and then error subclass and exception subclass. You see the just see the hierarchy of all of these exception classes. Class hierarchy. Okay, we don't need to remember. You don't need to remember all of these class name, but just give some attention so that you become familiar with some of these classes then then pattern for instance arithmetic exception how it is written arithmetic a is in uppercase exception e, e is in uppercase okay index out of bound exception just remember that how it is written index i in uppercase out o is in uppercase of o is in uppercase right bound b is in uppercase bounds is in plural and then e is in exceptions just remember that how these classes are named. Okay. And uh, out of memory error. So you see that out, O is in uppercase, of O is in uppercase. And similarly in C sharp, that is also an exception handling mechanism and there are some built-in classes that we use and we'll be using in order to handle exception. In C sharp, the exceptions are, are categorized mainly two types, is uh, application exception and system exception. And then there are other subcategories that are mentioned over here, but if you do go to do a Google search, uh, that they may look at this, okay? So let us uh, focus on how to handle our exceptions. So one of the, mechanism that may I mention that the code that might generate our exception we will put that code we will enclose that code within the try block and we use another cache block followed by a try block that we will put to handle any exception that could be generated in inside my try block. So at least in order to handle our exceptions, we need at least one try block followed by one or more multiple cache blocks. Okay, we need one try block and followed by we can have multiple cache blocks. Sometimes different kinds of exception happen according to the kind of exception, a specific kind of cache block is caught the exception. For instance, in this program, if you write this program right exactly this way, what will happen? It will show you a, a compile time error. This is com not an exception, compile time error that even it will show this error actually. In Java and most modern programming languages, they know that developers know that when you will use keyboard to take some input, there is a more probability that you will do some mistake. Or some people will do some mistake. So this is why they enforce that when you use, for instance, the read method over here, the error is gener being generated here due to the use of read method. The read method is used to take a key and input from keyboard, okay? So 
the programs in enforcing you to put this statement, at least this statement within cash try block. And use another cash block, even that is empty, to handle those. Block. For instance, here that was my program, that was my error, error line. This, this, even I, if I put this line, <coughs> even I put this line here, if I put this line here, <coughs> that will create an error. Okay. Actually, it is. Okay, this line will create an error. So whatever the error will be, if I take my, hover my mouse over here, it is showing me that unhandle exceptions type IO exceptions. IO exception means input output exceptions. So what unhandle, there are two mechanisms. It says add throws declaration, add throws declaration, one of the first, this option. And there is another option is that surround with try catch block. <coughs> <coughs> let us do the second one let us understand the second one first second option second option is that we if we select this one even it will do you said it automatically will enclose this code with try block and followed by there will be a cache block it generate automatically and this cache block here you are open whatever you want to do you can do you can re-enter the code or you can do something alternative way or if there is a method is called print track trace the track stack we know the stack we discuss stack right stack keeps the track of wall pointers and data when we call function okay so then if we print this one track trace, then it will show us the current status of, of our stack. What is the, uh, then by looking this track, we will be able to see what is, where was my error. And that kind of investigation or is called diagnosis. Like when you go to a doctor, doctor give us some test to find the, uh, your disease. Okay, so this is the simplest way that one of the simplest ways to do exception handling, what the, we saw that there is another option to do, to handle exception using throws, use, say if I add throws decoration, then what you'll do, it will add these throws with my main method. So give, a, give attention that my main method is ended over here right now. Give attention over here, if I select, the first one, then what will happen? So it will add throws IO exceptions. IO exception is a class that whatever it says, since my main method is being generating the errors, so at the end of our method, we can add throws IO exceptions. This statement, what it will do if it generates an error, that error will be thrown. We will discuss that later, what is meant by throws. And IO exception means taking, is called input output operation. If we hover our mouse over here, you see that it is added with Java since it's version one, since very early version, okay? Since version 1.0 JDK. Okay, so, even when I did not use this code, it did not allow me to even to run my program. Now, even I will be able to run my program. Now I should be able to run my program. If I run my program, actually it is, it is showing me a prompt to read something. Okay, so if I give this count over there, before that, then I will be able to see this, then enter a character. Even if I, what happens if I enter multiple characters instead of one character? So then my program is, is, is the try-cast block, what it is doing over here, or 
rows are reflection what is doing here it is taking all the first character since i use character type so whatever i am in read method can be used to input a re string but i am enforcing that here so patrick here this is the code for um, cast cast operation type casting Okay, this program is working. Similarly, for this program code, where uh, it generated an error, for instance, here, right? So if I enclose this statement with a try block, and then if I add another cache block, for instance, in the cache block, what I want to do, I can do anything. I can put a message, or even even if I want to display this here, for instance, I am reversing order. For instance, here, it, is it generated this error? Okay, y minus 2x, right? Y 10, yeah, it would generate an error over here, right? So I'm mean, over here in my cache block, I am doing something okay, something different. I'm, I'm displaying y minus x, not 2x. That it will skip our error, right? Our exceptions. So if I run this program, it should work. So here I'm resolving my issue. It doesn't matter how can I, I want to resolve. It's, it's matter to me how do I want to resolve it, okay? I want to resolve it anyway, there are, uh, whatever I want to do. I can do y minus uh, x or y minus 3 times x or x minus y, whatever, however I want, I can do that, right? The mechanism is that main thing that I am able to handle that exception. I know how to handle it, right? So this exception, this, all I should remember that, an exception is an accident. Okay, the runtime accident. Okay. And this kind of exception happens unknowingly. If you are like less care or not skilled programmer, then you will sometime, you know, so they don't, it's, for instance, think about situation. In this case, I am getting a hard coded value, right? But instead of getting hard-coded value, in my program may get data from another file, another program, or from another function. That may give us any value that may yield this denominator zero. That can bring this, uh, that can raise this exception, right? So no matter how this exception comes in, Okay, we need to be aware of that, that in an, uh, an exception may happen, okay, when, whenever, for instance, wherever you are doing an arithmetic op division operation, right? Whenever you do an arithmetic division operation, you may think, you may think that an exception happen, may happen in case for any how or any time, any reason, if it gets a divided by zero. So in order to develop a robust and powerful and good application, we need to be careful. And another thing is that sometimes, for instance, if I, you want to load some data from a data file, but the data file does not exist, or the data file is being used by another application, okay? So data file will not be able, available for this program. So in that case, exception may happen. So in that situation, whenever we do uh, some input operation, especially with our compilers, our programs uh, enforces us to do the exception handling. Okay. So one of the exception handling is simplest way is that we will use a try block that might cause an exception. We will enclose that code in the try block and we will use another cache block to catch and handle those exceptions. The cache exception 
cache statement is a little bit different. You see that a try block is try, we start with try, and we cut it this in C sharp and C++, and in Python, it will try with the colon sign. Here we are not discussing Python. And cache block, a cache statement is, is a, it always takes an argument. Okay, that, that argument is type of exception, what kind of exception exception you are, you want to handle. So in this situation, I want to do ex handle arithmetic exception, right? So I am creating an object of this type. I need to create an object of this type, E, and then whatever you do, for instance, you can, I did not maybe I deleted E code, so I said it's an E dot, If you say e dot, then it will show print, track, trace, print. You see there are some methods. Mainly, you see these are methods. There are some methods. You see that those are defined within throwable class. Throwable class. These are defined with throwable class. These are the exception handling methods. It is throwable. This one, this one, this one, this one. So for instance, if we mm, do like this one, simple, simplest one is the print stress stress. Okay, then what will happen? You see, I want to see the output of this one, what will happen? So this is the result of my print statement E. The, actually these two, these two lines. These two lines, uh, these two lines not the third line. These two lines, okay, are the result of my line number 18, e dot print structure. So by looking this message, then we can, we can expect that, we can show that, okay, there is an arithmetic exception that is divided by zero, okay, and it handled on this program on line number 11 due to cause in the line number 11. Okay. And at this point, I redirected my program. Whatever I want to, however I want to do, and then I can, so I can usually, I can print here, usually we can do here, or we can also print over here. We will do something. Okay. So the cache statement, it takes an exceptions and we use an object reference and we handle this exception with perspective to this exception object, reference object. Okay. Sometimes you see that in our case, for instance, E is, is was developed in throwable class. Maybe a few minutes ago, I discussed that e Java, this is our throwable class, right? So even up within throw, yeah, so IO exception is, an, is a subclass of my throwable class. So if you think that your exception will be an IO exception, then you can use upper level, any exception type of the father type, okay, parent type. So if you think that your, your, uh, your program will create an array out of bound exception, you can, on the, within the cache statement, you can use this one, or this one, this class, or even this class, or even this class, or the top class of the throwable class. So here in this case, throwable class is, is the, the top level one. So whatever error it brings, it will catch. And then my, maybe on my previous program, we, we can, we throw IO exceptions. So here I could use also IO exception over here, right? Okay, so it's, it, okay, sorry, I cannot use IO exception because it's not, Okay, input I. Uh, okay. 
here and readable cache block IO exceptions the exception might not follow try statement okay it is not IO exception so this is I will add many exceptions okay so in our program we can have multiple cache block okay so based on our exception time types the appropriate exception will be appropriate cache block will be triggered okay i can keep multiple exceptions for instance like if this else this else else for the first term, we can keep multiple branches to resolve our problem so we can have we can have scare statement multiple scare statement okay so in this case for instance if my exception be raised this type of exception then this cast block will be executed and the all other remaining will be skipped and otherwise my except if my exception type is exception then this block will be executed and all other blocks will be skipped okay and there is also another block is called finally block finally block is used to do something whether an exception happens or does not happen to do something finally block is executed if an exception happens or does not happen no matter uh, if, uh, whether an exception happens or does not happen the finally block is executed Finally, block is used to do something like, for instance, when you open a data file to close the data file. After you do your operation is done, then you need to close the data file so that another program can use it. Okay, so the the closing your file block file statement will should be put in your finally block. So in Java and programming languages, there are two uh, very similar keywords, like one is called final, another is finally. Okay, final we use sometimes to use, like to make a constant, or to make a class non-inheritable. Okay, we declare a class by final, but finally, the different word is here is finally finally is used no matter whether an exception happens or does not happen you we use we put some code that must be or always be executed we put those codes in a, in the finally block okay the finally block is associated with try block if you do not have a try you cannot have finally okay so now, now we understand how to handle an exception. Yes. Uh, what is the use of? Okay. Okay. Now it is time. Let us uh, go back to our real life situation. For this, this is the picture I was discussing, right, early. And a real life situation, a, an example of exception handling in real life situation. So as I told you that last word, I said that in modern highways there is an emergency way, emergency lane. Okay, that is used by special people, right? 
service people, uh, medical ambulance, fire brigade, police officer, they use this, okay? So no matter an, ex an accident, an accident means an exception. No matter an exception or an accident happens, we allies are enforced to keep this lane free. We cannot, as a general people, we cannot use this, right? This lane. Even there is an accident here, war does not here, we cannot use this, right? So this is our finally block. This emergency la lane is our finally block compared to our exception handling. And each of the alternative routes is one of the try or catch. Each of these lane are one of the, who can answer me? Try block or catch block? Are you sure? Yes, yes, we can only have minimum. We may have only one try, right? Only try, one try block, and then we can have multiple catch blocks. So we have only one highway, one road, and then we may have multiple lanes, right? At least one lane. Without one lane, we cannot say this is a way, a road. So these all of, all of these lanes are one of the cash blocks in our programming and this is the our finally block. This emergency lane is our finally block. So if you remember this except this this example, this story as an example of exception handling, then I think you should be able to realize what is an exception and how do we handle Okay. So far, anyone has any question? So I think in our next chapter, when we will use a file I/O operation, we will open file, create file. Then at that point, we will be able to see how we do use finally block clearly. So wait maybe until one or two more weeks and bring your question at that time. Okay, even if I forget. Hopefully, I will uh, <coughs> raise that. But if I uh, miss it, please uh, bring me that. <coughs> okay. What is that? There are some reminders. That's a good thing. Do not place try blocks around every statement that might throw an exception. Okay. There are some good reminders, so if you please read through this, I want to highlight only or at least one of them. It says that do not place try blocks around every statement that might throw that might throw an exception. <coughs> that is actually it says that although 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 we did this way, it's not a good way. Okay, rather what we need to do, we need to do use try and cast block. Okay, that had happens. Let me tell you another real story. What I want to mean by this? Mean by this. For instance, in our uh, oh, sorry, in our real life, whenever we see if there is an accident in front of us or our in our next block, we take a detour, right? We take an alternative way, right? But we keep our eyes open that if there is an accident in front of us, then we take an alternative way. But we usually do not drop on every block and see that, oh, is there any accident in front? No, we do not do that, right? Or no, we, we do not ask police officer or other people, hey, yeah, there is, a, is there an accident in front of us? Okay, <laughs> we don't ask that. Because we don't like to um, kill our time, right? So that giving your throws exception, throws this statement at the beginning of a method, okay, what? Enclosing all of this your statement with this try block is look is kind of thing that you are looking every step. You are going all of the stop and looking. You are stopping your car. You are driving when you are driving. You are stopping on every signal and looking. Is there an accident? No. Then you should go. Then going to the next stop, you are stop. You are stopping your vehicle and then say, is there an accident? Say no. So then you are. Uh, we usually do not do that, right? We do 
So if that guy will not do what it takes our time. So if we do that, then if we cast, uh, if we surround, surround all of our statement within try block, then our program execution will be slower. Right? So this is what it says, do not place try blocks around every statement. Surround the statement that might, you, that you think that that might cause an error, but not all statements. In your program, there is nothing that all statement will, will create an exception. There are a few specific statements that create an exception, right? <coughs> Okay, so there are other sort of recommendations in order to develop a good good program. So please follow these recommendations. Okay, so it is better to place one try block around a significant portion of code and follow this try block with gas block that handle the possible exceptions. Okay. Okay, the fo then follow the cache block with a single finally block. It says that there will be only one final block at the end. Okay, it says separate try blocks. Separate try blocks should be used when it is important to distinguish between multiple statements that can throw the same exceptions type. So whenever we, sometimes we need that if there are some multiple statements, for instance, Mm. If we have another input statement, we are taking another character. For instance, if we want to compare two characters, that whether the characters are same or not, right? So instead of putting both, maybe I may need to another another read operation. So it says that instead of putting all of this read operation in, in a single try block, better put this this try this read operation with a try block and the next try operation uh, next input operation within another try block okay that is says that it is important to distinguish between multiple statement that can throw the same exception type use multiple we can use multiple try block Let's see how many slides are there. Maybe we, ne we need one more lecture to finish this. By the way, all of my course are available in my GitHub account. So get this program and practice. Okay. Oh, I want to see. Let me see how many lectures I do have for this. Okay, I have, we have full week. We have uh, another lecture for this one. So I will finish uh, this. The remaining uh, thing in our next lecture. So, but I want to maybe give you, can I give you something, homework or something to give you like study at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes? Okay. So, in our next lecture, we will discuss that exceptions are classified mainly two types. It's called checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. This is a good interview question. Will you please come forward and give the lecture remaining part and done. I'm closing now. I, I'm, I want to give you a homework. Please study maybe 20 or 30 more minutes. Okay. Next time, so do a Google search about what is called checked exception and unchecked ex exceptions. Okay. Checked and unchecked exception. This is a good interview question. Okay, we will give, uh, we'll discuss this in our next lecture. So I want to give you a try, try yourself, give a try yourself if you understand this. If you understand this, in our next lecture there will be 
easy for me to finish or whatever you study i will discuss in my own way so that you can be clear okay so even if you spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes if you do a google search about checked and unchecked expression you will learn something maybe even you are not you do not become clear we i will make it clear in our next lecture okay thank you so much